Really? <laughs> Hello again, bud. Here. There you go. <laughs> uh, there's only one person who likes new server day more than me. But this is not just any new server. This is an NVIDIA DGX system loaded up to the gills with a pair of Intel Cascade Lake Xeon CPUs, 512 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and if you couldn't tell from the name, eight NVIDIA V100 GPUs. I've got some big plans for this box, but to make all of it happen, I'm actually going to need more than just my home lab rack. So today, we're gonna to deploy this to a colo. It's time for a craft computing road trip. And sorry, Rambo, but you're not coming. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Now, before we get into it, a huge thanks to Unix Surplus for sending out the Inspur DGX V100 system for me to take a look at. I've been buying gear from them for years, and I'm thrilled to be able to show off some of their offerings. If you're interested in the Inspur V100 system or any of the other gear available from Unix Surplus, I will have links down in the video description. Today is going to be more of an unboxing and deployment video, but trust me, those who want to see this thing in action are going to get their wish very soon. So stay tuned to the channel to see both AI and some cloud gaming testing in the very near future. First off, what is an NVIDIA DGX system? NVIDIA has been building machine learning platforms for quite a while, but up until their Pascal lineup, they were mostly traditional PCI Express cards. I've shown quite a few different cards over the years, but while they were easy to integrate into existing server platforms being based on PCI Express, max deployment was roughly four of these cards per every 2U of rack space. Graphics cards were simply too big to cram any more into a space smaller than this. So NVIDIA designed a new GPU interface called SXM. This transformed the traditional PCI Express GPU into a mezzanine style card, which can slot onto purpose-built carrier boards. Rather than each GPU having power delivery circuitry, external power connectors, PCI Express controllers, or anything else that takes up space, instead these new SXM cards were essentially just GPU dies and memory on a much smaller package, rerouting the other components onto the carrier. That means no more bulky cabling or PCI Express power connectors. That means fewer overall components on each card. And that also means a new platform where you can basically fit double the number of GPUs into the same 2U space. The carrier also doubles as an NVLink bridge, allowing multiple GPUs to be pooled together to share their resources. Of course, this wasn't just about doubling the number of GPUs. It was also about having the PCs and servers needed to run them. See, while you could fit four PCI Express GPUs into a 2U box, most of those systems were also running dual Intel Xeon motherboards, which had its own memory, networking, storage, power supplies, and the like. By cramming eight cards into the same space, you essentially have the number of server CPUs you need to run the same number of GPUs. And if you watched my super micro videos from Computex earlier this summer, that's a strategy Nvidia still uses today on their B200 and B300 servers. This particular box is from Inspur and known as the NVIDIA DGX V100, and it's running eight NVIDIA V100 GPUs, each with 32 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. That's 256 gigabytes of combined video memory out of this single box. We've also got a pair of Intel Xeon 8260 Platinum CPUs with a total of 48 cores and 96 threads. It's also got 256 gigabytes of DDR4 registered ECC memory on board. So that means what was an NVIDIA V100 PCI Express card like this with 32 gigabytes of HBM2 memory is now crammed onto a space roughly the size of the die heat sink right here in the center. It's a pretty amazing bit of miniaturization going on inside this box. So what's the plan with this server? Well, true to my home lab roots, if a cervix exists in the cloud, I wanna try to host it myself. And that's what I'm gonna try to do here. I've been interested in quite a few different AI models and wanted a platform to self-host them. Not only for myself, but I'm looking at adding cloud AI access as a perk to my Discord users. I want to host a number of different models and allow the community to have access to them. Please don't knock this off the desk. I would very much like this to stay in one piece. Thank you. Like I said, I want to host a bunch of AI models myself and allow my Discord users access to them in the cloud as a perk of their Discord access. By the way, you can get access to my Discord by joining my Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. 
This can be anything from image generation, LLMs, audio or video generation, or basically anything else that will run on the resources that I have. But to do that, I'm not gonna host it here at home. Number one, while I kind of have enough power, that would basically be all of the power I have available in my server rack. And this box can use up to 3000 watts under full load. 3000 watts needs more cooling than I have available as my AC unit in my server rack is only good to about 800 watts. And then there's bandwidth and IP addresses. I've only got a single IP address and I'm sure as hell not going to make that public. And while I've recently upgraded to a higher upload plan, I still only have about 200 megabit available. So I'm gonna colo this box somewhere else. Some of you may know, but one of my longtime supporters is starting up a colo and cloud hosting business. Yocto has become a really good friend of mine over the years, and today we're gonna pay him a visit. I'm gonna drive up to his data center in Washington and get this beast of a system racked up and turned on. I'll work on configuring it remotely, and hopefully in a future video, we can start to run this thing through its paces. On top of AI, I'm also interested in seeing how it would run as a cloud gaming server. The NVIDIA V100 is still an insanely powerful GPU today, and with eight physical GPUs, each with 32 gigabytes of memory, we might be able to run 16 cloud gaming hosts off of this one server. As far as the rest of the hardware configuration goes, for storage, I've got a pair of Intel 16 gigabyte Optane drives that I'm going to run the OS off of, as well as eight 1.92 terabyte SATA SSDs to run my ZFS array. As far as networking, there are four 10 gigabit SFP plus ports built into the server, and I went ahead and added a dual 25 gigabit network card for good measure. While I may not need the 25 gigabit networking right off, it will be nice to have if I ever need to expand the storage network for this server. But I think that's enough talking out of me. Let's go ahead and get this thing loaded into my car and hit the road. All right, another fun fact of this, uh, I just, about two or three weeks ago, bought this uh, 2017 Chevy Bolt, uh, full EV. Liking it so far, uh, and this is definitely the furthest trip that I've taken with it. Uh, it's 98 miles uh, one way, so it's gonna be just shy of 200 miles round trip. I've got a full charge, 238 mile range. Let's see how this goes. And if you want a full review of the Chevrolet Bolt, let me know. Maybe I'll add that to the channel. But for right now, here we go. All right, so that server is deployed. And I will say, I cheated slightly. Uh, he happens to have a level two charger right here. So uh, I did charge my car for the two and a half hours that I was here. I'm back to 190 miles of range, but uh, I'll give you an average of uh, what I actually got as far as efficiency. But for right now, uh, let's head for home. Let's take I-5 South. Let's take I-5 South. So one cool thing about his place, uh, he's got 400 amps of power at 240, uh, plus enough air conditioning and bandwidth to let my server actually eat. Uh, I believe he's got five gigs symmetrical in his 
tiny little humble home lab. So uh, there should be more than enough to do some light hosting work for my new server. But I'm gonna go ahead and head for home. Uh, we'll get it all configured. I should be able to VPN into it and at least start to do some configuration. And at that point, I need to figure out what I wanna test with it, uh, what services I wanna actually deploy, and uh, we'll figure out how to do all that. Once I figure out what I actually wanna run, we'll see about uh, getting it actually up and running so people on my Discord can access it and run the different models and see what kind of AI stuff they wanna generate with it. Anyway, see you guys uh, once I get back home. All right, so we are coming up on the end of my road trip. Uh, I did charge at Yocto's, but it turned out I really didn't need to. Uh, according to the car, uh, energy use since last charge is 55.4 kilowatt hours out of my 66 usable kilowatt hours in the Chevy Bolt. Uh, we've done 205.8 miles. Um, I'll put the calculation on the screen right here. Uh, but according to my dash, that's about 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour, which is about what I get daily driving this thing in the city. So not too bad for doing pretty much 70 miles an hour down I-5 for 200 miles. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. And now I know, at least during the summer months, I can road trip it at least in a hundred mile radius of my house. So I'm happy. And just so no one thinks, uh, I ditched a server and you know, there's less weight in my car now. Uh, actually, I bought a Bamboo Labs P1S from Yocto, and I've also got a full replacement set of wheels and tires in the back for my new car. Uh, I picked those up while I was up in Washington. So uh, yeah, uh, if anything, I have considerably more weight on the trip home. All right, 3.722 miles per kilowatt hour. So like I said, I'll take that result. All right, a couple days later and we are back in the office and I've got full remote access to my DGX V100 system. Uh, if I jump on over to this, uh, you can see I've gone ahead and installed Proxmox and we've got a Windows VM running. Uh, here we can see all 96 of our threads on our Xeon Platinum 8260s. Those are 24 core and 48 threads each. And I think I mentioned that this server both had 256 or 512 gigs of memory. Uh, it came with 256 and I doubled that up to 512, again, because I'd like to test out some vGPU situations. But that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is LSPCI, GREP, NVIDIA are the eight Tesla V100 32 gigabyte SXM2 GPUs on board this system. And you you can see all eight of them are showing up just fine. Now, long-term on this box, I'm not sure if I'm going to run Proxmox. I'm not sure if I'm going to run containers or, or what exactly I'm doing. I just installed Proxmox so we could see this hardware and start to play around with it a little bit. But to make sure everything is up and running, like I said, I did install a Windows VM right here. So if we open that up, here is Windows. And I've gone ahead and passed through one of the V100s and the driver is fully installed and operational. Now I don't yet have uh, Parsec or any remote gaming appliance installed on this. Uh, it's a little bit more tricky with the Tesla V100s as there's no physical display attached to them. And so I do need to emulate a physical display uh, in able to get remote gaming working on it. There's a whole bunch of other processes involved in that. Uh, but what I can say is the server is officially up and running. Uh, so I think at this point, I'm going to kick it back to you guys. Uh, what do you want to see running on this absolutely insane piece of hardware? I've got a lot of really cool ideas. And like I said, I do want to open this up to my Discord server uh, members and my Patreon members. So get subscribed, hit the Patreon link down in the description. Uh, but down in the comments of this video, let me know what kind of AI process does, do you guys want to play with? What kind of AI processes do you want to see running? It could be specific image generation programs. It could be video generation. It could be LLMs. It could be learning. It could be audio transcription. It could be a whole bunch of different things. What do you guys want to play with? 
And again, a huge shout out to Unix Surplus for sending over the Inspur DGX V100 for me to take a look at and play around with on some projects coming up here very soon. Check out Unix Surplus, link is down in the video description where you can find this exact box or tons and tons of other hardware. Really, really awesome place for both home labs and enterprise used gear. Go check them out. But I think that's going to wrap it up for today. Hopefully you liked this video, and if you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. And, as always, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, everyone.